What is up, my character design compadres? We are here with another week of our journey into the character design process. So this week is really all about sort of losing your way and finding redemption by simplifying things down into a basic process. As an artist, you wanna deliver quality at a relatively fast pace, and when you do that, you tend to find shortcuts for things, or you assume that you might know a shortcut for something when in fact, you don't. So this week I was trying to draw our love interest character from our Space Pizza uh, made up series that we're working on. I was trying to design her in different poses when I had really only drawn her finalized version in one pose, in one angle. And I was really trying to tell myself like, oh yeah, you got this, you can do this, just draw the other poses and don't even worry about it. And I ended up sort of screwing myself over because I made the process take longer than it needed to. Because when you have a complex design or even a simple one, it's best to do things in fragmented steps. So that means going from your core design to multiple angle views of the character and then going into more complicated poses because then you familiarize yourself with the character and it just makes the process entirely easier. Instead of trying to do things in big bulk segments, you can break it down into simple steps and that way it makes it way easier for every step of the process instead of trying to funnel everything in all at once. So that's what this week is gonna be covering. So let's get into the time lapse. So we started out with some expressions for this character, going over the opaque version of my finalized character from the last video. And I was just trying a bunch of different things, trying to keep everything in the same style of what we've established before, but also give her her own little unique things. As you can see, I'm also struggling with this. My brain, just for some reason, did not want me to look up reference, and I really should have ignored that feeling and just looked up reference anyway, or even used my old reference from previous episodes, but I didn't. Why you stuck up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder? So, as an artist, not looking up reference, if you have enough experience, you can still get the job done, but it's most likely going to take you longer, no matter who you are, no matter how experienced you are, because reference always helps. It's just something we forget often. <laughs> or at least I do. <laughs> so really trying a lot of these different expressions, and um, I'm struggling with it, but getting through it relatively, and I feel like, and, you know, like, as I was doing this, I felt like it was going relatively well. It's going all right, it's going all right. And then I kind of came back to look at them later and I realized, oh man, like this is not going right. This is not going the way I want. So I gave myself some time. I gave, I gave myself some time and I just tackled it again and until I got something that I liked and something I found to be acceptable. Another little side note that I really like to do, and it's not necessarily something that any other artist has to do, or I don't even know if a lot of artists do this, but I like to leave little notes to myself when I like something or when I want to touch on something again in the future. I just found that it really helps me uh, motivate myself and it really helps me not forget things. And I am a very forgetful person, so any little thing I can do to make sure that I don't forget something, whether it be 10 minutes from now or 10 days from now, I will try to do it. Because because when you can keep track of your own faults as a person, that just will lead to success over and over again. So now the expressions are starting to come through a little bit easier. We've gone through the trial phase of, of uh, having a bunch of things not work. So once you get a bunch of things that don't work out of the way, then you're gonna start to notice more things that do do work uh, coming up from the surface. It's just pretty much a numbers game at that point. So I get a few more expressions in there and really just try to hammer it home, just get a good variety of expressions. And I'm not gonna be going through them and making them super finalized like they're in the middle of a TV show. I got the one rendered character and for something like this, you don't always have to make a super, super clean, super, super rendered version of the character. A sketch can be enough, just as long as it's tight enough for someone who, like an animator to pick up later and know what to do with it. And here I am going in for this pose that I was having a big problem with. And as you can see, I'm going in and erasing, I'm going in and erasing over and over again. I'm completely getting rid of the pose and trying to draw it over and over. It's because I didn't give myself prior knowledge in a simplified step beforehand. I'm trying to do too much work at once and it's too much for my little hamster brain to process. So I'm sure that there are a bunch of artists out there like Kim Jung-gi, 
probably Glenn Keane and a bunch of other ones who have been doing this for a long, long time, who can just do things out of their head and it comes out no problem and it's perfect. But for a lot of us, it just doesn't work that way. And you need to simplify things down into a bunch of steps. It's all in the head. Yeah, it's all in the hips. Which sounds daunting at first, but really makes everything easier. So I'm still going through trying to figure things out and it's just honestly a nightmare. I was having a really hard time with this and I feel it's important for me as an artist and as some as a YouTuber to put myself out there just a little bit to let you guys know that if you're having problems with your artwork, you're not alone. You're never alone. The best artists in the world have crappy days and it's just a normal part of the process and as long as you trust the process, you will succeed in the end. You just have to trust the process and you will be fine. So here I was thinking that I, it was coming along okay and I gave it some time and decided no, it just wasn't working. Like trying it a bunch of times, it, it, just, it just doesn't work. In fact, I tried it so many times, I'm actually gonna skip ahead because this is getting a little bit repetitive. So now I have decided to break everything down into a simple process like I should have done from the beginning, but we're finally making a little bit of progress here. And I've decided to make a turn of the character. So that way I will know what this character looks like in multiple angles and it'll make everything pose wise easier. I started off with the side pose. That's what I found to be the easiest to do after the initial design because it, you're already at a three quarter pose. So just going straight to a flat graphic angle uh, is super easy. And then one of the poses I find the most challenging, especially in a simplified animation style, is the front facing pose. If you look at a lot of animated shows, like I'm sure, like uh, I know that there is a community out there that is dedicated to posting Simpsons images from straight on because frankly some people think they're nightmare fuel and it, it makes sense because it's an angle you're not used to seeing the character in because the standard pose for animation is three quarters like this. It makes dialogue and expressions much more obvious to the eye. And we're, we're just moving into a bunch of poses now. It's a standard turn. I can't stress enough how important it is to regularly do turns as a character designer, even if it's just for your own personal collection or por not even for your portfolio. It doesn't need to be for your portfolio. It's just something that is necessary as a character designer to keep up your skills. And it's one of the fundamental things you need to learn how to do if you're going to be a character designer. The front facing pose I found is something that you really need to feel out and make micro adjustments when you see, when, when it seems fit, because it can look wonky really fast, hence those Simpsons Im images from earlier. But then the alternate to that is the rear facing pose is probably the easiest, at least for me. I, I've noticed that I think there's a lot less pressure when it comes to the rear facing pose. One, in animation, you're probably not gonna see it a whole lot. And two, there are no distinctive features that stand out nearly as much as the front facing poses do. So there's a lot less pressure to perform. Although it needs to look good, there's a lot less mental pressure. So I think you perform better just because there isn't a subliminal thing going, this has to be good, it better be good, or, you're, or you suck forever. You know, that little thing in your head that, that tells you that. Yeah, I know all about that. But the rear pose is probably the easiest. For <laughs> and then I just duplicated and adjusted uh, a couple of the poses, like the side poses and the rear three quarter poses. And actually I did all of the poses, I duplicated all of them because with a character like this, she's very symmetrical. So it is much easier and much more time effective to just duplicate every pose that you can and mirror it and then just mirror the details that aren't symmetrical. And now we have finally gotten to the final version of the pose we were trying to draw earlier. We spent so much time on this and it was really all just to get this one pose, but it's all worth it. Because if I would have just stuck with the pose at the beginning that I was very unhappy with and put it out for everyone to see anyway, I mean, I guess I am, but in a different way. Um, if I had just put it out there and said, ah, good enough, that wouldn't have made me happy. And I think it wouldn't have made anyone else happy either because when you put out minimal effort, you will get minimum feedback and minimum results. So I really wanted to put my all into this and I hope it comes through in the final product. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you really enjoyed uh, the process that we went through to get to this final product 
Uh, it's a long journey, but in the end, it's all worth it. And I hope that I've inspired you to at least give that little bit of extra effort into the character you're designing today, and maybe break things down into simpler processes that are easier to digest. I will see you guys next time. We'll be looking at storyboards where we will be posing our characters in place of the storyboards from another animated show. And I will leave you with that. I will see you guys next time. Peace.